Welcome to the Always Better Than Yesterday interview sessions. I am your host, Ryan Hartley. This channel exists to inspire and encourage your heart-centered leadership. Each week, I share interviews with some of the greatest heart-centered leaders in the world. I hope our time spent together helps you leave a heart print where those around you are left better than yesterday. Please visit abty.co.uk if you would like us in your corner. These interview sessions are brought to you by Matt Media Online Marketing, an independent agency who specialize in content marketing, helping business owners get their message seen by the right audience. If you want to get your business seen through the power of social media, head to mattmedia.online. On episode 223, I am joined by Amrit Sandhu, purpose and leadership coach and the host of the Inspired Evolution podcast, an incredible podcast with over 2.2 million views and downloads. Amrit believes that the greatest thing that you can do in life is to actually live up to your fullest potential, setting an example that there is truly a way to live beyond limitations. Amrit shares his personal inspired evolution journey on YouTube, featuring interviews with the world's greatest thinkers, minds, hearts, and spiritual leaders dedicated to self-improvement and personal development. His passion spills into everything he encounters and his enthusiasm for life is renowned for infecting those seeking to live their lives to the fullest. Amrit's inspiration continues to move communities worldwide and helps countless audiences break through to discover their own untapped talents and infinite potential. It's an incredible conversation. I was very fortunate enough to be a a guest on Amrit's podcast, Inspired Evolution, and it was a real honor and privilege to bring him to our community. This is episode 223 with Amrit Sandhu. Amrit, welcome to the Always Better Than Yesterday podcast. How are you, brother? As I was saying before, I'm better than yesterday. (laughs) I'm doing great, brother. Thank you so much for having me. It is such a pleasure to be here. Yeah, I, I am. I'm looking forward to sharing more space and time with you. Like that introduction was like when when you and I were on your Inspired Evolution podcast. Like, <laughs> I think it was a similar situation. I think we were recording um, in the even at the night time here in the UK. So I think I was mm-hmm. sat down at 10 p.m. and then you started with that big you. And I was like, right, good to go. I'm fired up. Amrit's bringing the energy. <laughs> yeah, man, it was an amazing conversation. And I have to say, it was one of the warmest conversations I've had in a long time. And I have a lot of conversations, yeah. not only for the conversation we shared, but also the way the conversation continues to carry on in like mm. the YouTube comments and the social feed. Like, your audience is incredible brother like they've just they've been tuning into the episode leaving comments and like really reflecting back on some of the stuff they took away from the episode and i'm like being able to engage with them and have chats further on and like people replying back to comments not sometimes it happens like they'll say something and they're sort of inspired moment and then you write back but then this is like they're actually like writing back and you're like whoa mm-hmm. it's like a full dialogue and it's like oh man it's really heartwarming so thank you um, love that for, mate for thank you for acknowledging moment. the community and, and that's why you're here man that's why you're here i want to share <laughs> i want to share your heart and mind with our with our good people and um you know Touch I, wood. I think one of the things i said to you on your podcast is like hats off to you like you've been doing this thing called inspired evolution for almost six years is that right yeah yeah five years and ten months yeah so nearly, is what linkedin yeah. says anyway <laughs> but it keeps and count that. i've lost count now you know you know you know you've been doing it for long enough and it's like, how old are you now and i was like i i'm six and three quarters <laughs> and then now it's like how old am i okay so 1988 was uh <laughs> yeah, yeah. well it's you know it's, it's incredible service you know i think anyone that comes to the work we talk about hard work anyone that brings something of themselves to the world is is incredible man so for six years it's like it's people like you that give me energy that inspire me to keep going oh, like you know we've been doing it five years here and or just over gosh, five and a half and and it's great to see just what's possible i think you're a you know, great um avatar for what's possible when you just keep sharing your heart with the world and you're doing what you love and i just love to know you know set the context let us know a little bit about your inspired evolution Yo, wow, that's a massive question. Thank you so much for that kind reflection, brother. And I glean a lot of inspiration from you as well, hence why you're on the Inspired Evolution. Um, What inspires my evolution? Well, let's just 
take a pause for a sec. And I think the key thing, like with inspiration as a word, it means to breathe. Mm. So let's take a pause. Let's take a breath. Um, I think there's so much going on in the world. Um, you know, the way I've interviewed Stephen Kotler a few times on flow and those sort of topics. And he says, you know, modern day society has like 20 to 25% anxiety just baked into the fabric of it, you know, wearing it. And it's, you know, and it's just like, okay, well, just, you know, can we just take a pause from there? And also inspired also means to infuse spirit into, right? Um, yeah, and that says, shares the etymology with enthusiasm, which means to like, yeah. So I think there's a whole spiritual sort of con- like evolution that's consistently happening in and around all of us. And it gives us the opportunity to zoom out a little bit on our humble little lives as well to sort of think about us as space monkeys floating on a rock, mm-hmm. you know, doing this thing. And it's like this thing called life and it's such a mystery, but in the day to day, like you're paying bills and then you're, you know, changing the oil in your car and they're filling it up with petrol and they're going places and you've got commitments and, you know, meeting your mates in the pub or whatever, whatever, whatever. You just, it just gets lost out. And I think there's such an opportunity for us to tune back into more signal rather than noise. And so much of life can just become noise. Um, and I think that's really what the inspiration is speaking to because we can't really fake inspiration. There's a thing that I love to sort of speak about from, you know, it's one of the top talk topics I do is motivation versus inspiration. Motivation will like gas up, gas you up to get to the gym for the next like 60 minutes, you know? Um, but inspiration, you can't fake. It's like when you see something, you're, and it, it literally like you took in prana, like you took in breath when you saw it. it was like, and so it's like, Oh, what is that? And it's actually animating your experience as a human being. And it's like, okay, so that is good for me more than just my mind body, but like my spirit. So that's inspiration. And then evolution is to build the life that sort of follows into that inspiration. That thing that gives you more energy, like do the things you love, do more of that. Um, that was actually the seed mantra um, that sort of dropped in. I was never one for like new year's resolutions. I always thought they were a bit. Yeah. Yeah. I know, I know I'm, if I said it, I'm going to break it. <laughs> and that's kind of my vibe. Um, which yeah, as a, as a coach now is really interesting to look back and be like, you were that guy. Um, but the year the inspired evolution was birthed, I remember I was in, um, Guatemala with my wife in this place called San Marcos and there's this beautiful, they, they look at it as a spiritual place cause it used to be a volcano. It, mm-hmm has subsequently become a lake and the transmutation from fire and earth into water is like this whole spiritual concept that they believe in, um, which I also believe in actually. Um, and so there I was sitting on a jetty and I saw more shooting stars this one night touch wood than I had ever seen in my whole life put together. And it was new year's Eve sitting there with my wife. It was all just a bit too pitch perfect. <laughs> and I was like, oh. <laughs> and the inspiration just sort of dropped in. I was like, you know what? this year I'm going to do more of what I love. And she's like, you set your news resolution. I was like, yeah, I think I'm going to do more of what I love. And that was the year that the podcast actually birthed and mm. came from a whole different bunch of stuff. But the stuff that really inspires my evolution is conscious conversations yeah. like the one we're having here today and the like the one we shared in our podcast and the ones I've been having every week on the podcast, the inspired evolution, but what also doesn't get captured, you know, like all the conversations I get to have with my community, your, your community and audience and like, the people offline, like who I've become in my community to my friends when they're going through stuff, able to lean into a brother. And yeah, it's, it's that sort of mindful conscious living that really continues to inspire me. Mm. Mm, I love that. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Adelaide uh, here in Australia. Uh, But I also had a very interesting childhood because I traveled a lot as a kid. I was an only child, a family of three, mum, dad, and myself. And it was interesting because dad was one of four, mum was one of nine. And so the, all their family was in India. So every year after about the age of four or five, um, every year I would go back to India. My parents would take me back to try and keep me connected to my roots. Mm-hmm. But then around the ages of like five or six, I, they were, I was traveling as an unaccompanied minor, which was some of the best memories mm-hmm. of my life. It's so I was like, <laughs> you know, uh, we could go into that to the nth degree, but I'm conscious of the time we have together. Um, but yeah, so traveling like was always a big part and traveling to India. And it was this awesome upbringing because I got this real juxtaposition between Australia and mm. India, which are two very different places, very, very different places. Um, and somehow both were amalgamated within me, which was really interesting. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll talk more about that later, I guess, mm. at some point, maybe if necessary. Yeah. Hey, friends, thank you for being here so far. I just want to have a heart to heart moment with the men. 
Men, are you tired of going it alone? Do you want to connect with other men who have been there, who have gone before you? Then Akira is the group for you. We know that as men, we're supposed to have it all figured out. But the truth is, none of us have all the answers. Well, that's where Akira comes in. Our group of successful men is here to provide you with the support, guidance and advice that you need to achieve your goals. We don't just talk the talk, we walk the walk. Our members have been through the ups and downs of life and we've come out the other side wiser and stronger. We want to share our knowledge and experience with you so that you can avoid the pitfalls and reach your potential. Akira is our brotherhood, a place where men can be vulnerable, share their struggles and celebrate their victories. We meet regularly to discuss the issues that matter most to us, from career, finances, relationships and personal growth. And we do it all in a safe and confidential environment. So if you're ready to level up in life and become the best version of you, the best version of you for yourself and those you lead, then consider joining Akira today. You can find out all the information that you need at abty co.uk forward slash Akira. The link's in the show notes. We're waiting for you, brother. Here we go. Back to the interview. Yeah, man. Yeah, I have a friend who is of Moroccan descendants, so African mm. descendants, but lives in this town, is kind of like second generation, lives in this town, so has never been or lived within that country. And mm. we've had many conversations around, well, how does one find identity and how does one find belonging? Yeah. It's, um, well, you're going there, so let's do it. I'm surprised. So actually the root cause of my depression, where I struggled for depression for six years, so we can talk about inspired evolution when it started, but actually we've, we've all, we're always all growing, really. We're all on it all the time. You're breathing we and you're growing, yeah? Yeah. right? <laughs> it's just like, I was like, I'm breathing and I'm growing and I'm going there. <laughs> Maybe a bit too much intensity at times, but um, here we are nonetheless. But uh, yeah, I... And I struggled with depression for six years. I remember sitting the time, the moment I was diagnosed, I was sitting opposite um, the, the psychologist and amongst some of the things she said, the key thing that helped unravel the sort of thread um, was you need to install honesty as a value and your whole life will change from this point forward. If you can make that commitment to yourself, your life will change for the better. Mm. And it was super painful that she was able to just like in the gooey bit, just like stick her finger like right in the gooey yeah. bit. I'm like so tender, man. It was like, oh. And then subsequently having, you know, done years of work, that was like almost over a decade ago now. Um, having done years of work on that, looking back at why that was so tender. Um, now I have plenty of language around it. And I think that the, the most concise way I can articulate that is when you grow up, with you were talking about identity just to sort of mm. remind people where this conversation started was yeah the growing up with in an indian household with indian values right mm -hmm. or let's just call it foreign values mm -hmm. um in a western country right. australia um which is true for a lot of us right because we're all multi we all came from somewhere like the indigenous of this country are the ones that are like well everyone here is 200 years young you only start realizing that when you travel to Europe, I'm on a tangent anyway, like the buildings are like so old there and here they're so young. But yeah, the reconciling of like growing up in the Australian culture versus being brought up with an Indian culture and the values are different significantly in certain places, yeah. right? Um, in India, it's like simple things like you stay with your family until you get married and move out. And even then you're not meant to move out your wife comes home and lives with your parents and your children live there. Three generations of family live in the one home in India. Now that's slightly changing in India because they're adopting more Western ways, but three generations. Whereas in Australia, it's like you're 18, figure out your life, out yeah, you go. Yeah. They, they literally like push you out the door and you've got to like sink or swim in the deep end, you know, and yeah. there's pros and cons to both of that, yeah, yeah. you know, um, neither is right. Neither is wrong. It's just very different, different values. And um, yeah, my big one was in the Indian culture because there's so much population and in India, like to get ahead is really difficult. So oftentimes when you meet someone, you're meeting 
the best dressed version of themselves is the polite way of putting it. Yeah. The, the harshest way to put it is like, oh, it's oftentimes they're dishonest, you know. Sure. But that's just a, a mechanism to cope with how challenging it is to get ahead when there's so mm-hmm. many people. Like I can't even like be hard on them for it. It's just the nature of reality there, you know. And it's common, play, common knowledge that like people look at – um, developing countries and like there's a lot of corruption in some of these places and that's just part of the fabric and indians are pretty funny about it they're like yeah we're corrupt but at least we're honest about our corruption <laughs> you know <laughs> western yeah. countries are corrupt and you've got charities that you set up and all these yeah, business structures yeah, and offshore right. bank accounts you just you know you're, you're just hiding your corruption you know, like, yeah, it's so, corruption. so yeah. interesting um but then in the west it's you know growing up where i was people would just like they valued just transparency, you know, and it would show up in all the little things. When we talk about depression, it sounds like this massive thing, but it was all the little things that were causing a lack of connection. We both discussed Johan Hari's lost connections yeah. in my book. People would like invite me over for dinner and I'd be like, oh, I'm just five minutes away, knowing full well that I was an hour away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey friends, I just wanted to take a quick moment to introduce the new official sponsor of the Always Better Than Yesterday podcast, Matt Media Online Marketing. Matt Media have been involved in the production of over 100 interview sessions. I highly recommend their services. Matt Media Online Marketing are an independent agency who specialize in content marketing, helping business owners get their message seen by the right audience. If you want your business seen through the power of social media, head to mattmedia.online. You can find the link in the show notes. And here we go. Back to the interview. Right. And then you get there and then they're disappointed in seeing you. If I would have just told them I was 60 minutes away, they would have like planned alternatively people would have started eating and then I could have yeah. just joined in later and it would have been all the rage. Yeah. But the fact that they waited, everyone's food's cold. Now I'm the one that let them down, but I'm like, Hey, I'm here. And they're like, yeah, thanks bro. Yeah. You know, and losing those connections, not realizing that honesty was really valued in the West, you know, whereas in yeah. India, you say you're, you're 60 minutes away. They're like, yeah, I know he's three hours away. It's okay. Let's start. <laughs> you know? Like it's, it's a non-issue. Um, so yeah, reconciling that stuff can be hard, but once you get clear on what you're in, it was an amazing opportunity. Like one of the key things I do as a coach now, first place I start with everybody is values. What are your true values, your core values, not what society wants for you. Um, if I can actually, I'll just sort of say like, if you, if, if your audience is tuning in wants to like discover their own core values, I've got a quick 20 minute exercise available to everybody inspiredevolution.com forward slash values. And 20 minutes from now, you could be super clear on your values and what they are. Obviously, listen to this episode to the end. (laughs) But 20 minutes from the end of this episode, you could be hyper clear on your core three values. So for me, I'm connection, contribution, celebration. And that's really who I am at my core. Whether it's the West, whether it's the East, wherever I am, India, Australia, I'm Amrit's going to connect, contribute and celebrate. And just having that, and like when we talk about identity now, I'm so comfortable in all of that. It's like it can I mean, give me permission to show up the way I want to. Long answer, short question, but no, identity is well, a big it, topic. It, <laughs> but it's the um, the antithesis of the depression is connection, isn't it? This is the thing that, that the Johan Hari will talk about. So what is it that we're connected to? And I guess it's the connection to the essence of who we truly are. So when mm-hmm. you said I, uh, when you're, um, I can't remember whether you said it was therapist, was talking about the word honesty, the thing that kind of came to me is that is that being honest with self others or is it this big overarching capitalistic lie that we continually we get in told about ourselves ryan hartley with the questions right um i love it so the um one of the things i found myself i still find myself saying is it was so hard to apologize to my friends for how much i had wronged them through my dishonesty and many of them i've had great conversations with about it subsequently and like healed and i had the chat you know it's and some of the best chats of my life came from that place and yet for a long period there i still couldn't have those chats yeah and i wasn't even on the hook for not being able to have the chat within myself honestly Mm -hmm. because it was so confronting to even just acknowledge how dishonest I had been with myself. Like there was such a chasm of work in just there alone Mm. that even beginning to apologize, to talk to other people about, Hey, I was dishonest this one particular time. And it's like, I spent all my time with me 
completely living a farce, buying into my own bullshit, telling myself something was was happening one way and it was completely the other way and being okay with that and then being okay with the fact that I wasn't okay with it but still trying to – and it was just this spiral and it was just – and like you said, it's connections. And also another way of looking at depression is depression is the opposite of expression and not being able to mm. authentically express yourself. Yeah, every time you do that and you're being dishonest with yourself and others, you're like depressing. You're like pushing yourself smaller and smaller and smaller and you're depressing yourself. And, you know, and a lot of the, honestly, what a, a lot of what the Inspired Evolution is dedicated towards is allowing people to be themselves fully so they can allow that true version. Of, it's called live your purpose as a punchline, but mm-hmm. that's authentically you so that we can have less mental health issues like that. What I went through, I don't wish upon anybody, basically, touch wood, which is the, yeah, a lot of what you drive the Inspired Evolution as well. I love that. Thank you for going there. And and like the juxtaposition of me smiling as you're talking about those things. He's is a like, knowing is, smile. It's because like I know like if anyone <laughs> is a knowing smile. Exactly. It is yeah. it's like I recognize exactly what you're talking about. And and for mm. many people listening, it's like it's such a it's such a wonderful thing when you start to come face to face with all that which, you know, maybe we would like to hide from the world, or maybe that isn't our best side. So you and I interviewed John D. Martini, right? And he talks about love being the acceptance of thesis and antithesis. But what we're talking about mm. is the antithesis, is the shadow, it's the it's the less desirable behaviors. Yeah. And the start to emerge out of that depression and healing, for me, and this is why I'm smiling, is to learn to have compassion for ourselves. Mm. Which is, can I be with myself in my suffering? Can I walk alongside that younger version of myself and realize where... Maybe that was just that I didn't know any better or maybe I had an unmet needs in some way so that I can mm. look at my behavior and go, ah, I know, where that, I know where that comes from. I know this is your podcast, but I'm going to ask a question. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, mate. Yeah, go ahead. Do you think, and maybe we have a loaded experience, but I would just like to ask anyway, just to sort of, and maybe we'll get a loaded answer. Um because of our shared experience, our, our type of experience. I'm not sure, uh, sorry, ask a question. Uh, would you have developed compassion the way you have any other way, like without having faced your shadows? Do you think you really could have? I think I'd have had empathy. This... I think I can have mm. empathy by curiosity, by trying to ask questions and by trying to learn. Help me understand how you feel but I don't think I would have compassion as much as I do without having faced my shadow. And I think, so I've just shared something recently about the gospel of Mary. Um, The, the analysis of it talks about how many of the disciples were not present during the crucifixion. And what Mm -hmm. the analysis reveals is that compassion is a feminine trait Um, because masculine at their best are fixers, right? And, And there's a guy on a cross. You can't fix that. (laughs) <laughs> there's nothing you could do to fix yeah. that so it, it's like well what does yeah. a man do when he can't fix it well, he he runs away I, mm. I, I, I exaggerate for effect but so this mm. this idea that f- compassion is a, is a feminine trait well it, it takes a a man specifically br- you know, brave willing courageous enough to sit with mm. the so i interviewed dr john uh dr john gray who wrote men are from mars women are from venus yeah great little book yeah. yeah, right. And one of the things that he says that men are struggling with their mental health is because they apply that fixer mentality to their emotions. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and you and I know, right? Their emotions are feedback mechanisms. They're not yeah. they're not things to be fixed. But when a we man tried. Realizes, we tried, right? guys. For you tuning in and those that are trying <laughs> having a realization but, right now. We sound enlightened, but we we're not. <laughs> we there's just, irony in we that, right? A lot. <laughs> but that's part of the journey. That, that's the irony mm. that we go. Oh, of course. There's no surprise that I ended up yeah. coming a cropper when I tried to fix those things or tried to avoid those things. So when a man applies that fixer mentality to his emotions, he will conclude that some that he can't he can't do that, and the conclusion mm. will be that he's the one that's broken. So having that compassion. That feminine quality has to, we have to suspend our desire to fix anything 
and com means to be with and passion means suffering so we mm. simply have to be with ourselves our younger selves in our mm. suffering we don't have to do anything about it we just have to understand it yeah it's i still remark upon for individuals such as yourself and myself how much of potentially touchwood life was engineered for us to learn those lessons to be able to sit there for others yeah. um, because it's like, I could say this to the audience right now and you may potentially get it, but for some of you, it means nothing. And I'm acutely aware of that. And that's not a judgment on my behalf. It's just like, but just listening with compassion mm. actually heals. Like a lot of, like we call what I do coaching, but oftentimes it's a lot of just listening with an open heart and the other person can just feel that they're not judged and everything just moves through them. And there's like a catharsis that happens and you're just like, okay, that was today's session. Mm. Good chat. And they're like, that was yeah. fucking amazing. And I'm like, you know what's so funny? I didn't do I, much, but it was like, very active listening. Like, I with, wonder whether yeah. you experienced the same, which is I'm so much better at doing that for other people than I, might, than I am my own wife. Oh, for your own wife, for your own self. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's sometimes easier, you know, particularly as a coach, as a professional, when there's not an attachment to that person or the emotion or whatever it is, I find it so much easier to be able to hold space. And it's a real challenge. Mm -hmm. to, you know, many people kind of come in, in our sessions and like, why can't I do that for... Why can't I be this? Because you've not been given permission. <laughs> you've yeah. not been given permission to be coached by or to coach your, your nearest and dearest. They yeah, just want you also, as you. Yeah. And there's just something about when you're that intimate with like, all your trigger points are like just consistently bing, bing. They're like yeah. one of my, uh, uh, we're listening to a podcast here guys. So I, Definitely have to like one of my favorite podcasts is the Ram Das podcast. Yeah. Um, if you haven't checked it out, please do go check it out. They've done this awesome thing. Ram Das, in all his wisdom, kept an audio journal. And even as he's traveling through India, like you get bits of his audio journal. Now, there's gaps in time where other people fill in the gaps and they feature guest speakers and stuff. But then there's parts where it's just you and Ram Das traveling through India together and listening to him and his thought processes. Anyway, one of my favorite episodes in this whole podcast, um, Touchwood, bless his soul, he's gone now, but man, what a legend. Um, but one of my favorite bits in this podcast is he goes to India. He spent six months with, um, oh, why is the Baba's name escaping me? Anyway, he spent six months at the feet of the Baba learning from this culture and he's just like, I'm enlightened. Like, I get it. Everything I was running behind in the West yeah, is just... Yeah forget about it rocks back up to america wearing his robe and his like sandals that look like birkenstocks <laughs> he's just like walked back in and he's like got this enlightened he's enlightened and he's spent and he said it took one weekend with his uh one weekend and a dinner at his mother and father and all it took were his was his father's i'm butchering it he took all it took was his father's question of so what do you do for work, Rupert? For the whole veneer to smash into a thousand pieces. And he describes it, so, he articulates it so poetically. And it's just, yeah, and the, the, that's where the famous quote from Ramdas comes. If you think you're enlightened, go spend a weekend with your family. Um, it's, you know, there's, there's something about how intimate we are with each other that, you know, and let's be real, our relationships, I, I, I share the sentiment that, we don't actually have, well, we do have mirrors for our soul, mm -hmm. but they're just not the mirrors that we can look at for our physical being, but the mirrors are our relationships. Yeah. We're mirrored in each other. And that's mm -hmm. how you can actually s s start to see the shape of your soul. Mm -hmm. And it's malleable because you can improve your relationships. So you can improve how your soul navigates life. Mm. You are a, a student and a practitioner of uh, Eckhart Tolle. And the the words that it says is that you've been to this school of awakening, which mm. for me, the words imply that we can learn awakening. We can teach mm. awakening. Mm. And one of the things that I've heard over the last few years is this idea that if you are awake, don't go around trying to wake other people up. Go and spend more time with people who are awake. But let's mm. just say that there's an invitation from our listeners that we may nudge them towards an awakening. 
Mm. You know, where do they start? Where it might be a big topic, might be quite simple. I don't know. I'm interested yeah. in your answer, but how does one learn and tiptoe, dip their toe into uh, one's awakening? Mm. It's a great question. I literally just published a video on this on YouTube. Um, so it's the answer is very fresh um, within me. So I could talk about it for 15 minutes, <laughs> which I did. Um, so the engineer in me likes to sort of present information in a very systematic way and conscious that life is a one big constellation, right? And that's one of my favorite quotes from um, Steve Jobs, which was at his deathbed. He said, life feels like a constellation when you're walking through it, but when you look back, it's a dead pan, like one straight line. Everything that was going to happen to you meant to happen to you and it was happened to you for exact reason. Um, so life, it feels like a constellation, but, you know, giving you the map so you can navigate the territory with a little bit more grace, and a little bit more ease. And some say that the map, having the map helps you navigate the territory a little bit faster. Widely accepted, you will find that there are four levels of consciousness. Um, and to keep it very simple, level one, life is happening to you. Level two, life is happening by you. Level three, life is happening for you. And level four, life is happening as you, right? That, I can't make it much simpler than that. Now, what you're asking for is how do we go from each of those stages into the next? And that's really where the heart of this question is, like awakening and how do we continue to awaken? So I I have a feeling that most of the people feeling like tuning into this podcast would be level two or level three consciousness already um but just for housekeeping sake level one life is happening to you and even now you know i've got some very intimate family members some really great friends and life is always happening to them they are not in control they are not in charge they suffer from anxiety because they want to be in control but you know they're not able to and the key word here and it's going to trigger a lot of people because then i'm afraid to share this because then it turns some people i've gone i'm not that but in a, at the heart of it this person is the victim right yeah life is happening to you and yes. you just anything that happens is someone else's fault anything that happens is you know life is life is hard or you know some people go as far as saying life's a bitch or you know karma's a bitch and it's like dude do you realize what you're saying like touch wood your words have power and Touch wood, pardon me for even just saying that, right? But mm -hmm. you find people saying this stuff and it's like, whoa, mm -hmm. at that level of consciousness. And, you know, it's not, again, it's so easy to say, maybe, oh, level one, like, you shouldn't be. Dude, that's part of your inspired evolution. That's where you're at, yeah? Level zero was where we didn't even have language. Yeah, yeah so find, language you know, then evolved us. Yeah, what I find on. really interesting is because I know where you're going to go with number four. And mm. I think... I think level one is the inverse of four, right? It's still the same thing. You're still creating life as you are. Yeah. Because you're just perpetuating that, that you're viewing life through that level of consciousness and therefore you're manifesting whatever is in alignment with those beliefs and perceptions. You're just unaware that you're doing it that way. Yeah, I, I still spend plenty of time just marveling at, what life at level four must look like and you've given me a lot to think about just in that simple statement that you've yeah. shared i i for the life of me i know the more i think about it the further away i am from level four because i'm yeah. in my head well uh, so um, you and i talked about david hawkins mm. work map of consciousness right and i think oh, one, of, yeah. one of the really helpful things that he does in the power versus force is he describes a situation mm. say that he there's a homeless person he describes what someone might be thinking through the lens of every consciousness level. And, and what that kind of gave me the perspective is that actually it is that level of consciousness that shapes my interpretation of life. I look at that and I think, oh, I, I, I can either look at that through a lens of shame and go, oh, how embarrassing or how poor. Mm. Or I could look at it through anger and go, well, why isn't somebody else helping? Or I can mm. look at it through the lens of love and go, right, this guy's human and, and, mm. and how might I lean in and be of service? Mm. And um, and I think that kind of, that speaks to both levels one and four because level one is this, my life is a printout of, of all the stuff that is subconsciously running my life. 
And then level four is being able to take that same principle, but know that I am the creator. Yeah, as you're sharing this, I'm realizing that actually that map of consciousness fits very well through the levels. Because as you start to approach towards anger, you're starting to get to the middle of the chart and that's kind of where level two starts to flip towards level three. Right. Anger is actually, you're no longer the victim. When you're angry, you're raging. Life is, and you're definitely in level two when you're angry, right? Because you're not in level one. Well, you're not a victim. You're like, I'm going to change some shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to get out there. And energy, have, who's like, put your hand up if you've taken an action out of anger and then the next day gone, what did I do that for? <laughs> I put all my hands and toes in the air, man. <laughs> like, yeah. like, anger loves action. Like it goes, oh, do that now. Send that email and tell them. Like, okay. Justice. And then. I was like, oh man, I took two steps. I thought I was taking one, like one step forward. I took two steps back, didn't I? <laughs> uh, I've learned that the hard way. Um, but yeah, anger is level two. Life is now happening by you and you're the achiever. You can achieve stuff. Anger, like, you know, and it's not necessarily defined by anger. Um, you know, there's a lot of inspiration in that space as well. Like I can do things, you know, you're the doer, you're the, you know, I can set goals and I can achieve them. I can set goals and I can achieve them. And I'll be honest, the inspired evolution was birthed out of, hey, like, yeah. This whole like capitalistic model of living, like uh, like part of it started off with a rage against the machine. Like, dude, no, like I don't want to be this little pod in the matrix growing up, machines harvesting human babies. That future <laughs> is now not buying in. Like, you know, it was full on yeah. when I when it, when the inspired evolution was birthed. Um, but yeah, subsequently, then you grow and evolve, and you realize that that was part of it. Mm. And from there, life is happening through you and you start to learn to surrender right so to go from victim to sort of buy, like life happening to you to buy you the key thing is questioning you start questioning the nature of your reality does it have to be this way why is it that way it just shouldn't be this way and then you start to go there and then the next part is to surrender you start to achieve a whole bunch of goals that were set by you and potentially you go oh i got exactly what i wanted and oh I still got inner work to do because I don't really feel fulfilled. How many often, how often do you feel that, hear that story? I'm Jim Carrey said it. Like, I hope everybody becomes famous. So you realize that it's not it. Mm. Right. Um, and at that point you've done everything that was possible by you to do with life. Yeah. But then you've like, Oh, life is happening through me and I'm going to dance this with as much grace as possible. It's like, what are the synchronicities that are coming your yeah. way? What is life telling you? What is, you know, potentially, well, yeah, what are the messages along your path and what feels inspiring for you to just go follow? Where is it? And I love touch with this level because this is where flow, because I call it the flower, right? Because it's like, where does energy show up for me? Like in this conversation, like we started, I was like, it's been a long day, but I can't wait for this conversation because yeah. I know when we start talking, conscious conversation is what I was put here to do, touch wood. Cause I figured out my values. I'm all, I'm all about it. And so I know I'm going to be energized when I start doing this and you start to flow because it's, you know, life is happening through you. Um, and then life level four is like where you dissolve into oneness. So I don't, I haven't figured out how to do that yet. Yeah. My humble old ego is still a little bit, or oh, quite a, quite a bit afraid of that in some ways yeah. and really excited and stimulated by it in other ways, but it's still the ego that's banging up against that ceiling. So I'm just conscious that, yeah. Yeah, there's that. Mm. I am. Um, I'm sure you've probably experienced this, and you talk about that success and that lack of fulfillment on the other side of what we thought might bring that, or, or what at least the the serpent of the Western culture kind of leads you to believe. If you just get mm. more and you just have more, then you'll feel like you're more right. After I interviewed Matthew McConaughey, the mm. biggest question I had was, "Who's next? Who's next? Who's next?" Mm. And it was a complete example of the sickness, I think, that we have in the Western world, which is of bigger, better, more. Yeah. That in some way that they misunderstood that what what the, the values with which I was trying to bring to even do the po it, the podcast was never about the Oscar winners. The podcast was about having conscious conversations, exactly like you say, good conversations with good people and sharing that with good people. It was never about the Oscar winner. I'm going to butt in there because I've obviously been a podcaster like, as long as you have. And I have to admit that it's almost a case of what got you here doesn't get you there. Mm -hmm. 
I find with the awakening and the different levels and I'm loving how the David Hawkins map is just now overlaid over the four levels in my head right now. Thank you so much for that gift, bro. That was huge, is huge. Um, but, uh, you know, something as simple as, and I'm, uh, this prob like may or may not have happened at your end, but something like for me, let's say, oh, Marianne Williamson's coming on the show. Okay, like, Amrit you've been waiting to buy a better camera. Now's the time, yeah. you know? And it's like, dude, it's like, now's the time to upgrade your mind. Like, Marianne Williamson's coming on the podcast, you know? She went for presidency of the United States. Like, come on. Yes, right. You yeah. know? And then you, you do, and then, so that doer, that level two, like set a goal, achieve it. Like, you know, and I often think it's a spectrum. I don't think you like up leveled into a, like, I still slip into victim around certain things. Like we talked about family before I go home and sometimes mum's like, Hey, and I'm like, well, <laughs> you know, like we slip, you know, we're moving through life in this sort of constellation all the time. But yeah, I do think like, I do wonder, and maybe I'm being very level three about it because life is happening through you. Even as I'm looking at this, I'm realizing I'm in this conversation, but some part of me feels that even getting Matthew on and then having that epic conversation, lots of your systems and yourself would have got organized tighter around the show, which is a greater service and it would have built it. And that was important, but that was a point where life was happening by you, you know? And I think it's so easy to look at the lower levels and go, hey, like I should be higher in the level. But it, again, what I said before is like, I believe it's, we're all on an inspired evolution. There's actually no right or wrong. Mm. Um, and even in the moments where, you know, someone is over there being level one consciousness, it's super helpful for me to realize, oh, I don't want to act like that in those situations. Yeah. And that can be alleviating for me. And was that person actually a level four consciousness and just giving me a lesson? Like, uh, great question, Amber. I don't know. <laughs> you know yeah. Like, well, yeah. And, and this is, you know, without, without getting our, um spiritual shoelaces tied up like mm. the, the the reality i think is one of that's characterized by a level of peace mm. you know what i mean if they if we're reacting to other people and they and the and the way that they react to us then again it's like like you said that's a mirror of invitation to go oh how much how much of this is an attachment how much of this is pride and ego you know how mu how how much am i really surrendered to this this idea and and um so I, there's a there's a wonderful guy called James McRae who's the um he's got an Instagram page called Words Are Vibrations and he wrote a book yeah, called yeah. How to Laugh at Yourself in Ironic Amusement During Your Existential Crisis. <laughs> and, and I think uh, and I and I think it's such a wise statement, isn't it? Because I think there yeah. is humor and I think there is irony as we go through our conscious evolution and our awakening. Mm. Yeah, I um, I was talking about it. I think I can't remember if it was on a podcast or with a friend. Either way, um, that mo that point is moot. Um, the we were talking about absurdism, and I literally just came across it recently as you know, always exploring philosophy and topics. And absurd absurdism is just this. At its core tenant, is very attractive because it's like, yeah, have that extra coffee. Like, yeah, you know, just stay up a little bit later and enjoy the book you're reading snuggled into the blanket of kite fireside. Like you're like, as I said, the the space monkey hurtling through space, like this whole thing, <laughs> this experience of consciousness is just like so absurd that why not just do that thing? Like, and the whole thing is so absurd that you might as well just go and explore and create and be artistic and blah, 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 blah. You know? And it's like, it's actually really, a funny, but like, and it reminds me this gentleman that you're referring to, um, having this view on the world, like words are vibration, but at the same time, like allowing yourself the opportunity to play through it. Now, mm. as we get older, it's interesting because now that I've become a father and I, I'd love to get your thoughts on this as well. It's, there's like this natural sort of, the archetype of you starts to change. I would almost go as far mm -hmm. as saying, you know, it's you step into more like you just step into more responsibility and it's a great evolution. Mm -hmm. And yet it, um, yeah, I'll be open about it. it. Feels like it even takes a little bit of work mm -hmm. to keep your inner child along coming along the journey with you, you know, before you just like, 
hey, I'm a kid and I can just, you know, be a big kid and you know, da, 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 da. and then you become a father and you're like, whoa, man, like I like stuff matters. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, you know, we need a roof <laughs> and uh, I got to get you from here to there and got to look after you, <laughs> you know, it's like responsibility. And, but it also somehow has this real propensity to just suck the joy out of stuff somehow. And I don't know where that became a belief system. And I feel like we collectively bought into that. So I invented a word. I think it's perfect because words of vibration mm. was where we, and it's called refundability <laughs> and I'm buying it. <laughs> I'm selling it and I'm Trade buying buck. it. <laughs> <laughs> refundability. Tell me what that means. Well, it means stepping into fatherhood and like be, being the exact kind of role model touch wood actually that I want my son to be like, I want him to be responsible, but I don't want him to be like, I don't want dust on the furniture. Fuck that. I want him to be responsible and yeah, grow up to like, but also like, yeah, not like you don't have to be the life of the party if you don't want to be, but also yeah. like don't shy away from the conversation and, you know, hang out and like have the conversations, enjoy yourself and have fun. Like if you, you, we don't know how long we're here for and you may look back and go, you know, I've coached a few people that are transitioning and it's, I feel quite honored and quite privileged actually to be their coach because you get an insight at that remarkable point where someone's, you know, in that space and their regrets are not, they're not what you think they'd be when, you know, you're our age and you, you the things you're doing. And it's literally as simple as mm. making more time for your friends and your family because mm. that actually was what was most important. And making time for your own fun. Mm. Like achievement. You know, I was so wrapped up in achievement and thought that it was going to be fun once you got somewhere and actually you were actually having the most fun on the way. And you hear this from people that are literally like reflecting on everything and you're just like, it's hard for it to not to leave an impact on you. Um, and so responsibility. Have fun and be responsible at the same time. Yeah, <laughs> and, it, and it may be that they're your two of your values for your family because i think one of the things that you know when it comes to conscious parenting is to equip with the, our our children and our family with a sense of identity who we are so i interviewed mm. dr gordon newfeld and he says if you don't teach your children who they are they will learn who they are through the world From and other it won't people. be us teaching them it'll be youtube it'll be tiktok it'll be society it'll be the yeah. adverts that leave them feeling like an inadequate it's it's yeah. so that it's so full when, on it's right. full on. So we can go to that with a degree of fear and trepidation, or we can go into it, like you say, stepping into that, um, uh, not avatar, what is, what's the word you used? Archetype. Uh, archetype. We can step into that father archetype and go, I'm going to lead my family. And, and so many men are out in the world leading teams and organizations and very successful outside of the home and a very mm. passive inside of the home. They almost like delegate mm. that to, to the, the wife the, to run the house. And it's a huge disservice to the to your family because they don't get the very... The best, best version of you. They get the rest of you, right? Yeah. So, so, so many men feel like they are valuable because they are providing and they've got success mm. and status outside of the home. But what a disservice. So it's all well and good for the world to love you, but what about if the kids... What about your kids? Do your kids love you? Do your kids admire and respect you? And that's not a question of you. That's just a, a philosophical. Kind yeah, of... and 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 I'm I'm reflecting on it because I think you mentioned that that could have been the family's values, and it, it is. Well, there's two points I'd like to make. Firstly, is probably we, we like with destiny, we just don't know like whether it's completely free will or everything's written right. Okay. And people have been asking that question forever. But yeah. one thing I will hang my hat on is, and I have a lot of hats because I don't have much hair. I've got to look after the scalp. <laughs> um, I, one thing I will hang all of my hats on is the one thing you do have, yes. whether it's all written or free will, is the choice, because it comes down to choice, of how you show up. Yeah. 
right? And so I'm still, and that that was like parenting taught me that real well. So I'm yeah. I can sit here and scrub dishes like life is happening to me, and I'm just like the dishwasher in this house now, and I'm just scrubbing <laughs> everybody's dishes, and everybody had a great dinner, and I'm scrubbing dishes, huh? dishes, dishes, poor me. I can yeah. totally do that, bro. I'm like, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, when you haven't slept for like properly for like months, it's so easy to go there. Or you can be like, dude, I'm gonna do these dishes. How do you want to do the dishes? You want to put some music on and just, you know, do the dishes because you're going to do them anyway. You've got a choice, right? And that slowly, and it was probably only about six to eight months into parenting that I started to go, oh, I found a word for myself, (laughs) refunsibility, right? Like I'm going to be responsible, but I'm not going to be this dusty old cane chair. (laughs) Like I'm going to, you know, I'm going to adopt it and make it into my own. So that, yeah, that's one of the other things. And the other thing I wanted to pepper in was when you know your core values, I don't think your core values really change that much. And Dr. John D. Martini, we've both had an amazing body of work. But when you, like, you know that I know that my core values touch wood, or it's been a nice reflection for me to, to reflect on my core values, which I do repetitively, consistently, almost all the time, um, to recognize that even as I've transitioned through different states as a child, as a, you know, as a worker, as, you know, an old business owner and all the things, and now as a father, <laughs> as a husband, my values haven't really changed. I'm still connection. I'm still contribution. I'm still celebration. That's really the value that I get from everybody and also the value I give to everybody. So like when it's family, it's like Amrit's the one that's connecting, right? So it's like connecting ideas to people, people to ideas like my son. He's got some really kooky stuff going on and I'm all about it. And it's like, how can we connect on the kook, right? Like, and that's just, and I know that's not every father and it's not meant to be for every father, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm connection and I'll find those little bits of connection because that's what I'm wired for and that's my my core value. So I'll, I'll build that. And same thing with contribution and celebration. Yeah. Yeah, It comes back to what you said about depression and actually the opposite being expression. Now that you have the clarity of those three values, you have the freedom of expression, which leads to your fulfillment and the sense of living purpose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I couldn't have put it better myself. Mm. Yeah. I love that man. Well, it's, um, you know, I had this thought a year or two ago, which is this idea that what makes us different from animals, you know, animals, they, they, they work out of reaction, don't they? They, they don't, they don't have the prefrontal cortex of what it means to be a human. So if the humans Mm. are blessed or cursed with the prefrontal cortex, this ability to think logically, rationally, to have conscious choice, then maybe that's why we're here. Then maybe that's a big part of what it means to be human is that we have, we're the only species on this planet that could go to the grave having not realized our potential Mm. you know it's that choice and and some people might see that choice as a burden and some people might see it as a as a possibility and uh and i love what you said which is this idea that now that i know i have choice i have then a responsibility and if i choose to take that responsibility not to be cliche but it improves my ability to respond which is all of what it is, right? Life is but a series of interactions. And mm. if I can go to a, 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 one interaction with my children or my team or my business or my clients in a slightly better, higher vibrational frequency state, had I made a conscious choice, then I'd love to look back at a life of a series of those moments and see how that plays out differently to if I hadn't even bothered. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I heartily agree. And I find it, you never know what the sum of those little moments will be, you know? And like, yeah, you know, you mentioned the Matthew McConaughey thing. I, I've had podcasts where I've put them out in the world and I've gone, I do not want to put this conversation out in the world. <laughs> but this is not an episode of the Inspired Evolution. <laughs> this is not going to happen. Yeah. And then actually it happened recently and my team was like, Amrit, this is a good conversation. It's like, no, we're not doing that one. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. I'm not putting it out. And then we put it out and it went like literally it went gangbusters, almost like it was meant to teach me that lesson of like, yeah. you're in your own way. Stop it. That was ego. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like you had the conversation. It's made for the world. Life is happening through you. 
Get out of your own way again, please. It? Because because it sometimes it takes that experience in the side. Because if you think, okay, well, I'm being intentional. Maybe there's something about my. At what point do we even? It's that trust, isn't it? How do I trust? Am I am I am I using my intuition? Am I should I surrender? And and I guess the irony is that in this lifetime we'll never know. So we've always just got to learn to just observe, be the observer. Yeah, I agree with you. Recently, I've, I'll say and, recently I've been, having interviewed all these people, it starts to get, like I'm starting to notice what some people call intuition. And maybe just the listener tuning in, like just try this on for size, yeah? When I say, and some of you were resonate with this, some of you won't, but if, when, if I say you were made for more than what you're doing at work right now, some of you are like, nah, I'm killing it, I'm doing it, you know, I'm leading a heart-centered life, it's awesome. But some of you, like it wasn't like a, I wonder if I am. It was almost like this ping went off. As soon as I said that, it was like, mm-hmm. And it was quiet. It was subtle, but it was like deep, like the ocean. And you just felt that. And I've noticed that people that make a change in the world generally have this connection to what they feel like is they just knew there's a knowing. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's the, it's intuition is kind of what we're speaking about. Mm. But there's this, I found intuition has this, all this loaded baggage around it. But when I can speak to it as what do you feel like you just know, like it makes no sense to know, you know, not, not cognitive, not, you know, beyond prefrontal cortex stuff, beyond amygdala stuff, just what do you like somehow just know, mm. you know, and that's a real, real amazing part of the mystery to start to tap into. Mm. So with the um, example of this podcast episode, then where was that knowing when you needed it? <laughs> ego was in the way totally it was head noise it was head noise it was stuff yeah. like oh i've done an episode like this before and that other yeah. episode was so much better why would i put this one out and it was totally head noise and this is the, this is the the key thing that i'm and this is why when you were saying maybe it's all perfect and you know uh, and i was like and it gives me the opportunity to be able to discern a little bit the difference between knowing versus how loud the thinking voice really is versus And it takes me to have to go, oh, that's actually really loud, the noises that are coming from there. Like, is this head or is this heart, you know? And then from there going, actually, the heart's a lot quieter. If you do want to listen to the heart, maybe take 20, you know? Um, yeah. And so that just that, I think as we're going along the way, we're, we're able to learn the tools a little bit better and we can refine ourselves a little bit further. I think um, that is available to us on our journey. Mm. Yeah, love that. I want to be super respectful, conscious of your time. When we um, when we spoke, you were doubling down on a few things within Inspired Evolution. What is uh, your focus? How, what is the next phase of expression of of this wonderful thing that you've been building? Yeah, awesome, great question. Thanks. Bro. Um, yeah, so we've been doubling down on the on the YouTube channel. So. We've um we've made a pivot from being a podcast that was being repurposed to YouTube to now really finding ourselves a YouTube channel that will be repurposed as a podcast. And that shift has been incremental. Um, but as we've made the shift, it's been a, a very conscious shift and also it's been heavily rewarded by our by our listeners and our audience base. Um, the community is just growing like rapidly and, and stronger. Um, and just the able to the ability to connect, like in a podcast, I send out an audio file into the ether. Uh, how do you talk back to me? And this right. is what I'm saying to you. Like our episode, it went out on YouTube, and people are commenting, and I'm commenting back, and I'm talking to them like, oh, I'm connecting. And obviously connecting. now you can see, like, I'm connecting. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah, contributed, yeah. and people are celebrating it, and I'm zinging. <laughs> <You know? laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so it's like, oh my god, why didn't I think of this before? And I literally have that thought, like, why didn't my head think of this before? And the knowing is like, bro. Time. You got better over the podcasting and now you're better at Spartan YouTube because of this journey. So exactly how it's meant to be relaxed. Yeah. So there's that. Um, so the YouTube channel is really where we're um, focusing our efforts. And it's been interesting because I've actually pulled back on coaching 
to allow more creative expression to just do more of, because I've learned so much from having coached over 250 people now one-on-one, like going deep, um, that there are consistent themes and I can build videos around them and share them on the channel. Um, and I know that they're like, there will be help in there because I've just seen the power of their transformation one-to-one in people's lives. So um, it's been super inspiring to double down on that. And uh, yeah, just creating little micro courses to support people, which uh, are free actually. Um, I've been told by my team not to use that word, but they are. Um, and I like the word freedom. So, you know, knowing when to go against the grain, I guess. Um, but they are. And just little micro courses on how to build out your vision, how to get your values, like I shared with you guys all before, on spiderbotion.com forward slash values. 20 minutes from now, you know your core values, right? And like just how centered and strong you are when you know that. Like someone comes to me, it's like, uh, you know, Brian, like, do you want to do a podcast episode? Will I get to connect? Will I get to contribute? Will I get to celebrate? Yes, am I there? You know, people go, do you want to be a coach for such and such? Will I connect, contribute, celebrate? Yes. Yeah. You know, do you want to be a lawyer for this, that? Will I get to connect? Will I be contributing? And will I be selling? Oh. Oh, sorry. Amazing opportunity. Pays really well. Unfortunately, not for me. Thank you so much, though. But the right person is out there for it. You know, it just makes everything so much easier. You know, there's, there's peace. Big time. Someone said, um, I can't remember who. It might have been the Gordon Neufeld book, but it says that if the, the cost to not living your values is your peace. The price you will pay will be your peace. <laughs> I love that. I would, for me, I would, I would say it's joy. Yeah, the cost right. is your joy. But it's yeah. interesting because Naval Ravikant on the Joe Rogan podcast went and hit this blew me away. It was like, joy is peace in motion. Ooh. And I was always like, oh, that is so good. Mm. Um, it's just, that was a game changer for me. When I downloaded that, it was like, oh, yeah. Peace is in stillness. Joy is in movement. And, but yeah, there's, I, I totally resonate with what you're saying. And yeah. Just that's what we're growing at the moment is the mini courses um, and the YouTube channel and just giving more contribution as <laughs> the second highest value, connecting, contributing. Um, that's really what's what's going on in the ecosystem at the moment. I love that. I find it fascinating how you're still shifting, still evolving, as it says on the tip, <laughs> after, you know, 2.2 million either views, <laughs> listens, downloads, like, that's huge. That's huge service, and yet you're still growing, <laughs> still evolving, still looking for ways to improve your service to your community, no. which is the the epitome of what it means to be better than yesterday. It's the epitome of what it means to be heart centered and and service oriented. And I just, you know, let let let's if I can take you to the future, and you know whatever number that ever hits, what, however many people you coach, however your child grows up, we're sitting back on a life well lived and you're reflecting on it, a life full of meaning, full of, full of purpose, all these micro interactions. You and I know, uh, we talked about the word heart print, which is the this ripple effect, which is this how we leave people better, the possibilities that we create for other people. Mm. Amrit, I'd just love for you to reflect on what you think your heart print will be. I thought about this a lot. (laughs) Um, So I can share it with you because it's an image of my head um, and my heart. So it starts really simply with me sitting on a porch overlooking this rolling hill. Yeah. And... Like I've got a a nice little cottage home and then next to the home, just on the left there is like this massive temple. Like it's just this awesome temple space. Um, Sacred work, whatever fashion, God knows, (laughs) right? (laughs) Sacred. And then there's a whole bunch of like amazing living quarters and dorms just along, just behind like a line of trees off from the temple. Um, and I get to sit out on this porch and people get to come to the land and enjoy themselves and live and be in nature and just really unplug, connect to spirit, right? And be inspired to evolve and just take their time to enjoy themselves. And I really think that as a retreat center um, is, is where I see myself going to rest. Much wouldn't, you know, that sounds a bit, however it needs to, but you know, 
Um, and I can, you know, touch wood, my family's around and, you know, we're enjoying that. But then also so much community, so many people coming through, enjoying the land, enjoying the connection, enjoying the ability to be there. Um, and I get to, because I'll probably be older and weary and I won't be traveling as much, right? So I don't get to live vicariously through other people traveling to come spend time on the land and the retreat. So I see that. Um, and then in order to inform and support that, um, yeah, I just see a whole body of, of work that supports wisdom and mindful living and inspired living and just the potential for just how epically positive we could be as a species, like a net positive good on the planet and for each other. Um, and there's a whole body of work, hopefully online and in print, that supports that for for people. And, you know, I often remark upon this because as I reflect on that journey, it feels like such a grand thing in my head, you know, um, and in my heart, it's like huge. But at the same time, it's like, you're only like a breath away from that now <laughs> in some ways, you know, yeah. touch wood. Like, yeah. you know, you've got community that come and play devotional songs, you know, and we've got a whole room set up for it in our house. Um, and they do that on the regular and, you know, there's a sense of community there and there's mm. content online and I've started putting together the first parts of my book and it's like, you're already there, you know, and that therein lies that sort of temperance of just surrendering and just keep going along and, but that's, I think that's the essence of the vision um, and the heart print. And it took a long time, actually, if I'm honest with you, to get to that vision. Um, there was a lot ahead in the way in terms of what I thought I wanted and what I thought ultimately what society told me I thought I wanted mm. um, and what other people told me I thought I wanted. But when I tune in and it's, it's really the simple things, community, nature, um, a little place to just rest and yeah hopefully that. stuff that's helped people on their journey kept well, them inspired that. kept them evolving <laughs> i love that brother incredible service and you know I, I i had a wonderful guy called joshua luke smith he's a christian kind of rapper artist author and he says that so often the life we desire is hidden within the life that we have and it kind of made me think about actually, do you know how when we stop to think about this vision that we have for the future, how much is already mm. present? Yeah. The, the essence or the feeling or the the being, how much of that can we already live in this moment? Choose wisely. Choose. Right. Right. <laughs> Amre, I love your work. I, I appreciate you. You and I could, we could probably do a Joe Rogan three hour, the amount of stuff that you oh, have. <laughs> <laughs> we've already done two hours together and you know it, it feels many like we've more to come surface right so i value <laughs> i value your energy i value your friendship my brother and um i look forward to another conversation with, with you again soon and we'd be honored if you'd leave us a final thought from your good self oh man the thought that i've had ever since i've been hanging out with brian is and we talked about words of vibrations and just the kookiness of words and how it all comes together and just how perfect it is that your last name is Hartley. <laughs> I've yeah. just been riffing on that in my own little ecosystem in my head. <laughs> I just this like, is my destiny, right? <laughs> oh, bro, it's you know, and you know, and and we reflect on names a little bit. And I think about for me, like in Sandu, like sands and time has this thing about mm. like grains, grains of sand and hourglass. And I just always think about like just use your time wisely and hoping that people, you know, remember to just, you've got one life, use it wisely. You know, I, I see that sort of emanating from, anyway, that's kind of what I tune into in my own name. And then, yeah, just, I just riff it on Hartley. You know? <laughs> I just think it's perfect. That's my parting thoughts. And just, yeah, that. man, thank you so much for who you are, what you do and how you continue to show up, bro. It's an absolute honor to be your brother walking home oh, by your side, you. man. Yeah. I don't talk about my tattoos very often, but in the inside of my left uh, arm here, I have a sand timer. Uh, <laughs> I have a sand timer with the with some scroll wrapped around it that says "Forever is never too long." Oh, oh I like that. You gotta, you gotta go like get yourself that. a heart tattooed on you now. I just realised <laughs> <laughs> I knew where this is going. <laughs> Next episode, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the first question would be like, where's your tattoo? <laughs> yeah, yeah, 100%. Uh, Amrit, love to you, your family, uh, and, uh, you know, thank you for the way you show up, brother. I appreciate you. 
Thank you so much for your love, Bert. Big love, old. Thanks so much for tuning in. Thank you for making it to the end of the interview here on YouTube. I hope that our time spent together has left you a little bit better than before you push play. Before you go anywhere, please leave a comment down below. Some of your key reflections, your key takeaways. I love hearing from you and what this conversation has inspired in you. Let me know what you're going to do as a result of this conversation. I will be back next Wednesday where I will share another inspiring guest. To make sure that you don't miss that, please do subscribe, hit the bell, and you will be notified as soon as it goes live. If you're curious to know how I, through Always Better Than Yesterday, can serve you, your team, your organization, please do visit alwaysbetterthanyesterday.com and it will be my honor and privilege to help you in any way I can. Keep leading, my friends. I've been Ryan Hartley, host of the Always Better Than Yesterday podcast here on YouTube. Always love.